I shall keep my, my remarks uh, very brief. I don't want to rehearse the arguments for and against electoral reform because they are always well rehearsed in this place and outside. And my position on this uh, is well known and it's a long standing one. And I suspect I'm not going to convince our speakers like the previous one or some of the other people who've come to speak against electoral reform uh, or indeed many outside. And I think the case was put incredibly well by my honourable friend for Staley Bridge and Hyde. But what I do want to do is to give some, I hope, uh, constructive and friendly advice to those people outside this place who campaign on this and have helped uh, ensure that we have this debate here uh, today. So this, my, my, my brief words are going to be about the, the tactics of how we actually win this battle, uh, rather than rehearsing the old and, I would say, in some cases, very stale arguments um, uh, that we've heard in the past. Now, in my view, we're only going to get electoral reform uh, in Britain uh, in two ways. One is if uh, a, one of the major political parties stands in a general election with a manifesto commitment for it. Uh, the second uh, is if uh, we have a general election which throws up uh, a hung parliament uh, with uh, one of the parties in a, in a coalition uh, being in favour and being able to deliver uh, that. Uh, and the... the, the the auspices from recent experience on the second uh, option are not very good. And I don't want to go rehearse all the reasons why the AV referendum was the disaster uh, that it was. But as we've heard today, those people who are still making the argument about electoral reform often refer back uh, to that uh, referendum. So in my view, the best way that we are going to achieve something which I have fought my whole political life for before I was in the Labour Party and ever since I've been in the Labour Party is to elect a Labour government that is committed to electoral reform in its manifesto. So to misquote Nick Clegg, just as those people who want to stop Brexit need to join the Labour Party to stop Brexit, those people who want to reform our electoral system need to join the Labour Party in order yeah. to achieve that. And I have some good news for them, because while there are relatively few Conservative members of Parliament, they're a, they're a small number and they tend to be very shy, they are growing in number, who support electoral uh, reform, there is a growing number of Labour politicians, trade union lead leaders and, and others in the Labour movement who recognise the, uh, the arguments uh, in favour of uh, this move. Uh, and I'm told even our shadow chancellor is an electoral uh, reformer, uh, which really? is very, uh, yes, indeed, I was, I was surprised myself, which is very, uh, which is very, very, very encouraging. So, indeed, so to all of those extremely well-meaning and right people out there who share our passion for a fairer, just electoral system, come and join us in that fight within the Labour Party because it, it is by the grassroots of the Labour Party putting pressure on the leadership through our motions at conference, through our policy our formation process, that we will get, get that commitment. And I think this is possible because, of course, it's only ever been the Labour Party that has delivered constitutional and electoral reform in this country. As other members have already said, we did it under the Tony Blair and Gordon Brown governments in Scotland and Wales, Northern Ireland, for the European uh, elections. And I, we did the House of Lords, or at least we partially did the House of Lords. All of the meaningful political and constitutional reforms in Britain have happened under Labour governments. And I'm confident uh, that come the next election, we will have a radical manifesto when it comes to constitutional reform. Let's help us make sure that there's a commitment to electoral reform in it. Yeah. Yeah. Henry Smith. Well